Yo, what up? It's your boy Owen JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. It's on a Wednesday tonight, not a Tuesday, because nobody would have been here yesterday. I wouldn't have been here. The All Star game was going on. It's summertime. It's hot outside. I mean, it is dangerously hot outside. So if you're inside, there's nothing else on. Sports are dead for the week, so you might as well hang out with us. Do me a favor, hit like, share, subscribe on YouTube. That's the only thing I ask for you. It's free. You could do it. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you have somebody that you think is an enemy, send them the show and annoy them. With the show, I'm gonna hop right into it tonight because we're gonna get in and get out. Harry, maniac. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the glasses changed. Oh, we got we got glass changed. Okay, that's how we getting done today. They're a little bent up, but I look good. Uh, good, good, yeah, they got good gradients in there. Um, you so you love the All Star Game because I do love that game. So uh, the All Star Game is like a drug addict game. Because you 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 really like it when you're a kid and it gets you really fired up and you remember, you know, one or two specific all star moments with that really made you really wowed you, you know, put you in awe. And then you watch it for decade maybe after that and you and you it's never quite hits the same. You never you're chasing that high. It was close. It's so still this, this year I felt that because there were so many Phillies in it. In the game? Mm, okay. the oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this That's year, I'm doing it. This way with Bohm and the, the, the home run derby, like him setting the tone. And even though I, I waited three days for him to hit again, it was just them having to talk about him because he was at the top and no one was reaching him. That was awesome. And then they had the game with so many Phillies there. And they just have to keep talking about the Phillies all throughout the game. Made me feel like that. Because you're right. When I was a kid and it was not the Philly or die. Like I am now, like it was like Ken Griffey Jr. Like you had all the stars. Like I feel like when I'm older now, I'm less wowed by a Shohei or a Mike Trout than I was when I was a kid. Like you're right. When I was a kid or kids, like th- those guys, Aaron Judge, if I saw him, that's a mountain of a man. You know what I mean? So your fandom changes when you get a little older. Like when I was a kid, Shaq was one of my favorite players right. of all time. You couldn't tell me he wasn't a Sixer as far as I'm concerned because I just love Shaq. I mean, what about Paul Skeen starting the game? I mean, that was that was exciting for me. I think, you know, again, without like the childhood kind of nature that I bring into it anymore, seeing stuff like that, just having power versus power. I mean, him versus Otani, him versus or him versus Soto. Like the first the, the first swing Soto took. I mean, he looked like he didn't know where he was. So uh, that's those are the matchups I enjoy. And again, it's the best All Star game because they actually have to play. You can't you can't take it easy in baseball. Otherwise, you're just going to look like a fool at the plate and strike out. So. Uh, and pitchers are going to get taken taken deep, so you got to play no matter what, and that's what makes it good. So, schemes, schemes. Impressive. That was a pretty pretty weak weak move putting Stephen Kwan in the leadoff hole. <laughs> you know, you could have just gone Gunner, oh, Soto, yeah. and Judge. You know, luckily we got to see it, but yeah. that ball to Soto was strike three, and it seemed as though they might have got. Like crossed up. That ball oh, yeah, was yeah. in the zone. The catcher missed the ball. Yeah, uh, that's a good it point. Was, it was good to see Paul, but Paul schemes do his thing. He's on. He's truly unbelievable. Yeah. But I'm really excited to see what he can do. I think he might win the Cy Young. He might. If he you might. guys are gamblers, I know. You know there's a, there are, is a, a thing out there that people do. Cy Young, Paul Skeen. But after that, after that first inning, I did kind of trail off just a yep. little bit. When we were, when I was a kid, I liked the All Star Game for the offense. Yeah, there's still yeah. no offense, you know, because these guys they come out with their stuff for one inning. Oh yeah, it's kind of it has changed a lot. You need it, to see it, a guy three times, right, to be able to hit him in the majors nowadays. They take him out after you know six innings, so they don't get that third time. And now it's in the like you said, they get one shot at these pitchers, and it's like <laughs> good luck. You might as well go up there trying to hit a home run. You might as well. Yeah, it it, it is crazy. I mean, so. Let me just backtrack to the to the All Star game, yeah. not all, home run derby. So, backtrack. did you like the format that it went to this year? I, I did. I liked the format that it wasn't like a bracket to start. It was just go out there and rip them and get as many as you could in. Um, I I don't know. Like I said, and going first with Bohm, I'm like, oh my god, this is it was just great. 
because after everybody after him, like you're chasing that number. Because I was like, man, that's not a great number, but it put pressure on everybody else, and it became a great number. No, I, I like that he, aspect. He, yeah, he went ahead. over his overs. Like he, mm-hmm. he was over under was like 19 home runs in the Derby, and he ju- he hit it. Um, pretty impressive. Like you know, I wasn't sure what it would, was going to look like. He did very good. I put five bucks on it, so I was really excited. I was. <laughs> I, I, was I did like the new the format, but I would like to see you get maybe a little bit more than three outs to work with, and maybe a, some other way of adjusting that to being part of the game, because that was definitely a skill that Alec Bohm did not have. No, you know, but there was other guys <laughs> that were money in the yeah. old school way, which we all. You know, it, you know, they just decided to kind of like throw that to the side. I like how they worked it in. I think they should work it in more. Yeah, because if you, so I forget who it was, but somebody didn't take any pitches. He just swung at the first four balls and went right out. And I'm like, yeah. what? You, you just saw everybody else take a couple of pitches. You didn't take right. any pitches. Like you, you need to go home. I was like, okay, hey, Oscar go. Hernandez put on a show. Oh, he, just, he just put on a show. He just and, dogged out, and like, I still want to know, like, did that ball? That boom hit like by oh a man, day. there was no replay. That's one thing about the home run derby, too. They always F up the rules, they F up the rules with the broadcast versus yeah. the actual count on the field. They've done that in the past. You don't even know really what you're seeing, right? Um, and after boom, it felt like they were doing more of the, the split screen for boom. Yeah. There was a lot of talking, they weren't doing those like they were doing split screen for almost everybody's hits after that for all the hits. So you could actually see them going in and out. It's like, oh, this one's going. No, it's not, bro. You, they kept saying it's going. I could see that it's not. But for Boma, a lot of his hits to start weren't on that split screen. So yeah. I'll be yeah. honest, though. I, I did have a – I had a sick, sick weekend. I went to Cooperstown, New York. Awesome. In Cooperstown, drove home on Monday after spending the day in Cooperstown, got home in time to watch the Derby, watch it with my kid. Like, he was locked in this year for the first time nine years old awesome. very lost awesome. i was i was i always liked the derby more than the all-star game that's been for years now so um the, the kid does he do travel ball or is he in town ball? he does he does do travel ball okay but you, you know i think they should have more skills competitions in the major leagues they should have them and for money a million bucks? Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. talking about Cooperstown. So I actually went to a couple of tournaments when I was younger with Taney Baseball to Cooperstown. So I could see the Hall of Fame, things like that. Some beautiful, beautiful place. you played more than one week as a kid in Cooperstown. I played I played up a, up a year when I was 11, and then I played the next year with my age group when I was 12. So a couple of times, and man, beautiful you place. <laughs> but I was going to say also, the, the talking about the skills events, there were, there were multiple skills events when I was there. Dude. There's an outfield throw for accuracy that was really fun. There's an accuracy for pitching, which is really fun. You're throwing into a net, but I'm sure in the majors they could make it tiny, you know, holes they're throwing into, stuff like that. So I'd love to runner. see. Remember they had the road runner? Yes, yes. I want to see them. T- I want to see these guys' I outfield see arms. De La Cruz oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Run. Wow. Yeah. Again, fastest fastest throw Cruz from short? For somebody, anybody. Estuary yeah. Ruiz. I want to get some of those. Right. It's all the pitchers yeah. got to show up and throw their best stuff, but I want to see these players, you know, they should do it have as well. A pitchers home run derby too. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, they, the teams wouldn't allow that. The pitchers they don't want their pitchers getting hurt. That's probably they'd be swinging out. They're swinging out their shoes. So, <laughs> but I do like the idea. I do like the idea. So Skeens the, apparently was a catcher in college and he was hitting bombs all the time. So Skeens could do it. Yeah, he played in college. He, yeah, he was a DH too. That's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's on – you just like – I was talking to Susie Cool from KDK Radio earlier today about him coming into this series on one of my shows I do. And, like, I, we would be – if Paul Skeens pitched in a Phillies uniform, mm. our hearts would just be in our throats all the time, waiting for his arm to come, come just uh, – <laughs> Oh, my God. Lying apart. And I – I asked her, like, do you get it? And they're like, no, nah, like, it's not something you think about, I guess. It's like a Negadelphia thing. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. it seems like he's his arm is made of, you know, plastic or rubber or whatever. I mean, he's grooving those 100-mile-per-hour pitches, so I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not worried. But you're right, if he was a Philly, I'd be worried about it. And he's it only, like – It doesn't look natural. It looks, it looks like he's, like, throwing himself down the line. It's, it's very forced. 
Right. Well, that's, he just picked up pitching, right? A couple of years ago, he hasn't been pitching for that long. So it's that's the other crazy part about it. Once he adds more to his stuff and his different arsenal of pitches and the mechanics, like he could power. really be special. Mm-hmm. Does the kid ever get? To, does the kid ever get to do a home run derby? My kid? Yeah. Hell no. He's like a midget. <laughs> uh, you say midget? <laughs> yeah, you can say um, America. It's fine. Yeah, no, he's um, he's so little. I'm actually trying to talk him into being a jockey. He's so <laughs> tiny. I said, dude, because he says to me he wants to be a prof- professional ball player, and I'm like, dude. Well, I, soccer, like, hey, soccer, you baby. Got like less than one percent of people. Like it's really, really hard. You can really do hard. it. Yeah. I say, well, what do you think about like jumping on one of those horses and like trying <laughs> that out? Like you can make millions of dollars oh, doing yeah. that too. You know, oh, really, if you're good at it. You know. <clears throat> like, well, Dad, he is pretty smart. He's like, but Dad, isn't don't you know that is like really really dangerous he's like eight years old i'm like yeah you know what you're right <laughs> well it, at least you're smart at least you're smarter than you're me right. well, it's probably because in travel ball because like we have bad town ball so my daughter only did travel ball one time but she's in town ball we had a home run derby every year and it was it was fun watching the kids try and jack them up i mean like and they're and they're all all the size kids like you got the little tiny kids so you obviously you bring it in for them but man, they be going for it because they feel like they're doing something. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's just fun. Yeah, they let it eat. Time. They let it eat. Yeah. Home run derby is just fantastic. It, it really is. It really I is. would love. I used to love it when I was like a older than 12 or 13, and go on that 200 foot fence when you get a little bit older, and finally yep. you can just dig them out with ease. That's always a good thing. They did that shit on Barstool yesterday. <laughs> they hitting the 792 like home runs in my honor of Barry Bonds. Oh, that's so great. True. Speaking of which, it was crazy. The Hall of Fame actually, I noticed now, has like a little section dedicated to Sammy Sosa and McGuire. Hmm. They had McGuire's bat and Sosa's bat, like that it says on it, like 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. The bat he used to break the record. And it has Sosa's bat that same year. They have a little teeny tiny like shrine, and it mentions PEDs in baseball. Oh, does it? And wow. that's it. You know, oh. I, guess it, I guess it's something if we're not going to get in legitimately. That's like, and then you watch plaque. the home run derby, and you're like, "Damn, steroids in baseball were oh. were kind of sick." They were they were not going far out. Some of those home runs, you know, what I mean, like <laughs> Mark McGuire and Sammy would have been, you know, <laughs> way well, out the stadium. Depends. That also depends on the park you're at, too. Yes, I, yes. You know. On the park right. But I it's one of those things where it that is one thing that kills me the most. I'm like, man, you regulate all this stuff. That was it, baseball was just fun. It was just fun. And they do so many things to fix the game now anyway. Like they're juicing the balls, yeah, all these things with the balls and all these other metrics and the bats. I'm like, just 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 they, they, they want to juice it up, let it juice it up. Because like, <laughs> Barry Bonds, quote unquote, pre and post juice was still hitting home runs. Yeah. You got to see the ball. Like Barry Bonds is a hitter. You know what I mean? Like as much as everybody wants to take someone, I was like, okay, well, for a very long time, he was still a great hitter. If you took that part of his career away from him, he's still a Hall of Fame baseball player. Like, I, just just let him in there. Just let him in. I, I can't. Yeah, I mean, I look at the class that they got this year: Todd Helton, Adrian Beltre, uh, and uh, who else was it? Joe Mauer. I like. I can't help but think, like, without the steroid era, like, are those guys? They're definitely not in as early as they're getting in. Yeah. Billy Wagner, you know, was very close. He had seventy five percent of the vote. Oh wow! Like, Billy Wagner's getting in the Hall of Fame. Like, dude, I think Chase Utley is going to get. He might in. have a chance. You're right. They they're, they're getting like, they're getting later with I the think with Jimmy the way they judge. Might get in. Like. All the, there's been a big shift, like the 300 Ryan wins, Howard, all that stuff. Howard probably will not. Howard uh, probably will not. But at this point, you're right. The, the, people are going to start leaking in that you didn't think had a chance to get in because they're going to have like, to put those people – they're going to have to start finding people to put in there. So, And they're, they're, find, they're finding ways to put so many people – keep so many people out is, is the problem. So I, I don't know. It's, it's It irks me so much. Um, do you miss – the uh, All Star Game choosing home field advantage in the World Series. Do you like that, or are you against that? Maniac. So my buddy was in town from L.A. and he's like 
very passive fan, like nowhere near like the level of fandom that we are. Like, but he he does like he'll watch like the Phillies in the playoffs, like that kind of the guy. And he was like, he like popped down on the couch. He's in. He's like, oh, he's like, does this game still decide who gets home field in the World World Series? Like, it did. And I'm like, no. And I was like, that has been not the case for a while. Um, I think we talked about a little bit earlier about the home run derby being a million bucks. Yeah. They should have something that's I get I mean, I don't know, like MVP of the game should get a million and a half, and everybody that's on the winning team should get fuck it. Everybody in the winning team should just get a million dollars. And they should do like what the NBA. I mean, the NBA is out of control right now with mm-hmm. their All Star. But I mean, like, so the guys, the winning team gets money, but then they also match that and give it to a charity. So right, they, that's another thing. Is like get involved with it too. So it's like, look, the winning team gets a five hundred thousand dollars, and so does the charity of their choice or whatever. Like, make it mean more than it is. Like, it doesn't mean enough right now. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Enough. It. it yeah, it's, but it, it does mean enough because it is like that weird. Uh, you know, nerdness of baseball. That's like, Ooh, it's the all-star game. Like, and it's oh. like I said, it's like, everybody's just chasing that high of maybe something crazy will happen. But I don't know. I felt myself lost interest after Paul Skeens kind of came out of the game just a bit, except yeah. for when the Phillies were up to bat. Did I'm you with, watch I'm the game? For sure. I, he, he did not watch the all-star game. I, he just watched okay. the home run derby with me. Okay. I agree that when I was younger, just like the nature of thinking about that this matters, like it's like, oh wow, all these rivals are gonna like join to join forces to try to get, you know, somebody from their division home field advantage. It was like enemies becoming, you know, friends all of a sudden just to try to win a game. So like I did like that aspect, but again, as I get older, you realize like, oh, it's kind of messed up if the best team <laughs> all year doesn't get home field advantage like in their division. So I agree, it has to be like monetary incentive or something like that, because as cool as it was to determine home field, it doesn't really make a lot of sense otherwise. So I think the money I mean, the that, that was something good. I feel like imagine being like shit we really got to get something to get people to pay attention yeah all-star game because no one cares exactly well you know what we're gonna do you, you know what yeah home let's field. roll it out let's roll it out <laughs> we're putting home field on the line right home it must have been yeah on the line. like that was balls that's a big yeah they they, they that was the nuclear option I mean, we're for still sure talking about it how many years ago was that can anybody check that I don't when know but it probably was at least Game ten years ago, that, that that first game that dis- decided, yeah, ten years ago, something least. like that. I'm checking on it, and it, it's funny because even right now, right, like this is the doldrums of the summer. Like right now, we have like the like no, nobody's watching, which is fine because it's summertime. People are they're checking out of sports, which is normally like I like to do that too. You get a week where there's no baseball, training camps coming in. Now you got like Team USA like playing basketball, and you might check on that or just check the stats and like. You might, if you're a nerd nerd, you might check the summer league or, you know what I mean? Like, but it's like you get a week off of sports because it's about to ramp back up again where it's going full tilt and yeah. baseball is really going to start to matter and football's coming in and, and training camps are out and you, yeah. you watch who's getting cut and all that stuff. So this no. week is just like, you finally get like, oh, let me just. <laughs> Olympics this year too. Olympics this summer. So now, wait a second. One. Like, yeah, like, hold on now. You, that, you didn't that, mention. That's what, that's what I'm saying. The hundred meter and the two hundred meter sprint because Those will be. I am dialed, <laughs> dude. I am dialed in. You dialed in. <laughs> one hundred so, and the two hundred. Th- Women's that, that was, and men's. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Like normally you get this, like you get like that break, but now with like the Olympics, you don't yep. because it's like okay, well something's still going on today, and there's 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 news nonstop. Normally like you get this break, like oh it's an all star game. I got like at least like seven to ten days of just like. Whew. But now it's like, nope. nah, dude, like stuff's still popping. Um, and everybody's actually watching WNBA now, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, you're out there, Mr. Bet Parks. You're out here in these streets. You're, you're in these streets more than I am, actually. I, my, my tagline is I'm in these streets, but you are out here in these streets. Um, uh, 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 drinking and dinking out there, having fun. Little, little, uh, <laughs> drinking, uh, and dinking. drinking and dinking. You know what I mean? Out here wilding out in these streets. Um, what, what, what do you think we need at the trade deadline? For what, what do you want? I don't know. I mean, the 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 move that you're going to get when it comes to like a bat, a right-handed bat, it's not going to be anything you need like 
that's going to blow your socks off. It's not going to be Luis Robert, like Roberts. It's not going to be him. Like he's not coming here. It'll be like a, a, a soft, like a soft move. Somebody you can platoon. I think a fifth starter, like in a weird way, is something I would like for them to just somehow address. But I just don't know how you do it because you're like married to pitching Taiwan Walker until he's just like on this disabled list for the rest of the year. Turnbull, he's we fucked him up. Excuse my language, but like you're good. he's all jacked up, like you know, and that's been his problem. Like you literally are, don't have a fifth starter. Now, if things get close, you're going to really be relying on these four guys. Like, I would like for them to just add a decent arms, pick somebody out of somewhere where he's in a good spot, like a, a dude that's maybe been a three or a two with people who's kind of on his decline. Throw him in your fifth starter role and, and just keep yourself winning games. Another thing, though, and I, I like, I, I do have faith it'll come through on it, but like, can we get? somehow another infielder or maybe i guess just start playing so some more if stott continues to struggle yeah i don't think you're gonna you're not gonna make a a trade deadline move for him so no i i would say a fifth starter like a michael lorenzen move last year would be a good move this is not going to be somebody that's going to help you in the playoffs but he's going to help you bridge your gap and you know relieve your your other arms, you know, he's gonna give you guys some and your bullpen some rest. Some Harry. eat innings. Harry. I mean, that sounds good. That's a good case you just made right there. For I wasn't really thinking about a fifth starter. I mean, I feel like uh, that does sound nice, just to help us get through the rest of the season, keep everybody healthy, things like that. But like you said, like obviously the two big names are Luis Robert Jr. and you know Mason Miller. People are talking about a little bit. I don't really know how like likely that is that we could get either of those guys. I would probably. I mean, again, if we get at least Ro- Luis Robert Jr., like that would be amazing. But I feel like that's the farm system. That's like, you know, that's where that's given up some legit pieces that we might not need to or want to. Um, again, if we can get Mason Miller for, you know, a penny on the dollar or, so, or whatever, obviously that won't be the case. That'd be amazing. But I'm thinking the same thing, you know, that it's unless it's these two big stars that we don't really need and we don't really want to deplete the farm system for, maybe just somebody to help us to kind of, you know, bridge that gap. So let me tell you something. First of all, funk that farm. Fuck that farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, I want everything. What you two yeah, just yeah. makes complete sense. I could give one shit about that. Mm-hmm. I want everything. Whatever the, the problem right now is that everybody is in, involved in the postseason. So yeah. everybody's going after the same assets you want, and other people are going to be going after those assets with more assets. So I'm like, look, Dombrowski, we've got this window, this three year run might extend to a five-year run of getting to two World Series, maybe three. You've got to win one of them. And right now, we're the best team in baseball. I, I fuck chemistry. I, now you got to <laughs> I don't care about none of that. I want something that's going to make me feel good at night when I go to sleep. Yeah. A fifth starter, a closer, and a bat DH. A yeah. <laughs> I want it all because I want to win this year. Mm-hmm. I, I I want no more excuses. They've overachieved. They underachieved last year. The unit is so solid. They make me feel so good. I'm so happy. I want a parade. I want it, and I yeah. want it right now. So I heard everything you said. Y'all, y'all made so much sense. I, Dombrowski. Middleton money, spend it. No, burn. You just want them all, though. Like, if you had to pick, though, I mean, if if I had to pick any bat or a reliever or, like I said, the wild card fifth starter, what would you If I had to pick, honestly, not not for nothing, like, I I haven't heard too many people say what you said that the fifth starter that would help the rotation during the regular season and keep pressure off the guys so they could rotate guys in and out. I know, I know Wheeler doesn't like it and Nola doesn't like it because they're the horses. But hey, you're gonna get an extra day this because we're, we're going deep into the postseason, bro. We're gonna start giving you guys an extra day just so we can stretch it out and we're not burning these arms out because you can also see what's happening with Sanchez and and mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know what I mean. Like it's the middle of the season, guys are starting to dip a little bit and everybody's all freaking out. I'm like, but let's uh, give a me a crazy, time. a really crazy stat that Mark Feldman, the guy I work with, pulled up on me today was that. Heading into that Sunday game against the Oakland Athletics, the Phillies had the number three ranked ERA at, in a bullpen in the national and the league, I guess, or maybe National League, whatever. It was their bullpen statistic, their ERA was in the top three in some of these this variety. And then that game, 
Stott comes into, I mean, Stott, excuse me, Stubbs, Garrett Stubbs comes into pitch. It actually shot him up, you know, several points to their like we're 11th <laughs> or something. And it was right, you know, the same day that he pitched. So that, that kind of screwed it up. The bullpen has been great. And that's the thing about that fifth starter spot is that, you know, if these, if that day becomes a real long bullpen day or eventually now somebody else goes down, then you have more, maybe now you're having bullpen games. I'd hate to see the bullpen get out of whack. And I also have a petition going around to just let Gregory Soto have big moments in the regular <laughs> season as we head into the playoffs. I am a huge Gregory Soto fan. You know, we traded, I believe it was Matt Veerling, who's absolutely crushing it right now for the Detroit Tigers to get Gregory Soto. Soto was an all-star. You know, the guy threw 100 miles an hour for the Detroit Tigers, came to our team. He's been, like, grossly mismanaged, I think, pitching the sixth inning, fifth inning. He was a closer in the AL, you know, for a long time. I, I, I would like to see him in some sort of a roll with more responsibility than he has right now. That's all so, I got. Before we get out of baseball, I'll just ask you one more question since you brought up management. How have you felt about Topper in these last two postseasons as a manager versus the regular season? Regular season Topper, I'm kind of fine with. Postseason Topper pisses me off. How do you feel about that? I mean, I, I love the guy. I mean, I love the guy. I, great human being. I'll great tell you what, though. I do think the guy's a – I think he's a gambler. So I think I tell, he's I'll like you very what, much a like a feel guy. Yeah, for like, sure, a feel guy. That's what I'll also tell you. he has like analytics involved too. But I don't know. I'll tell you exactly what my problem is. When we're playing the Diamondbacks, and <laughs> now I'm, I'm I'm actually getting angry. So I, can't <laughs> I just can't believe that Orion Kirkery pitched. So <laughs> in that yeah, forget, forget, about, right. forget, about the, forget about the pitching. Uh, let's talk well, about like just, just the line. <laughs> so, the the Diamondbacks have a guy out there who hit like. 92 times in a row, he went up there and he was getting mowed down by the Phillies. He took him out for a game and benched him. And everyone's like, what are you doing? You, you got to let him get back into it. They changed the lineup around and then brought him back to the next game. Just sitting him down for one game, brought him back in, and he started ripping again. And I'm like, Topper would never do that because he's a ride with my guy guy. Like, the Castellanos went cold. He would never say, look, bro. Today we're just gonna we we got a pitcher for you. Like I'm sorry, I gotta take you out. Like there's no strategy to this guy's hit 92 times in a row. Let's walk that guy. He, he he's hit 92 times in a row. This other guy's not hitting. Let's just walk him. Let's walk one guy on purpose. Just he's hot right now. Topper, just walk him. Topper refuses any kind of strategy. And like you said, I know his analytics. I know the things that go on. So, but he is a ride or die guy. That's yeah, why I will say Topper. something like, you know. I think it, it might have been like shit. It might have been my dad. Like was like, you know, that's his boy. Like Castellanos. Is, <laughs> oh man, of all people, Castellanos <laughs> is Topper's boy. Wow. And like, he might be his dad. I never considered we were that. talking never about considered. it. We were <laughs> like, I say it all the time. He's, he's not going to take him out. Like he's just not. You know, and I'm like begging for him to come out, talking about it with Johnny Marks, talking about it with Sam. And I'm like, Johnny Marks, I would like to get like, come on, like. And, you know, you're begging for him to get him out of there. And don't you know, like he hits a home run and then he kind of gets going a little Mm, bit. Yep. And it's like, that's the shit. Like, you got to have the balls. And like, that's one of the things that I'm like. I, know, I hate even to talk about it because I do love Bryson Stott. He's proved himself as a player in the postseason. He's he done has. a lot more than his career than a lot of guys will ever dream to do. Oh, yeah. Um, and and, and like, the best part right I now. just I just remember when Stott came on the scene, like I was very tepid to get myself involved with like really, really pulling for the dude because of the John Mayberries of the world, the Cody Ashies of the world, the, the, the uh, Tommy Josephs, like guys that like – came up in the farm system or whatever, or just were just thrown these positions, given the reins, the Scott Kingery's. Yeah, Scott Kingery. You know, that like, <laughs> you, you're like, this is it. This yeah. is our new dude. And like, Stott, like, it's like, okay, like, all right, like, he's all right. Like, he's doing yeah. pretty good. Like, all right, we'll see how he does next year. Like, I don't know. And, and he, he's in that third season and it's, you know, he's, he's technically a veteran. You know, he's got a, 
he's got to get it together because I think he's been a big per- like he was a big reason for why the, they've been so good in the past two years. Yep. He he can't uh, get figured out by the by the pitchers. He's got it. He's, he's gonna work through it. He's gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. I think he will be. I think he will be. I think he's different than Cody Ashy. And uh, oh my gosh, absolutely. I don't Wait, think he even, needs, uh, should be breathed in the same sense. No, and even when Stott wasn't hitting earlier in his career, right? Guys talked about his swing and his approach, and they were like, "He's gonna hit eventually." They always talked about him in that way, like one day he's gonna be a three hundred hitter type of guy. So I think you know, having being cold in the way he's been, it's like his approach and who he is and what everyone's seen his whole career and his whole kind of, you know, coming into the league. I think that he will write the ship eventually, hopefully for the playoffs, <laughs> uh, you know, give him the rest of the regular season to figure it out. So uh, you brought up uh, the Olympics. You got, yeah. you got, you got some good uh, stuff going on at that park for the Olympics. Get some juice going. Yeah. I got to figure it out. I'm not sure yet, but I'm pretty sure you can bet on break dancing in the Olympics. Oh, wow. <laughs> America. So yes. yeah, that could be a that could be a good bet. That could be a good sweat, man. That could, could be. Is, skate, is skateboarding the Olympics now? Is that this year? Or I, think uh, I think that's. I think that might be in it. It might yeah. be. Yeah, like, probably, I think. probably approved esports. Uh, oh, <clears throat> it's not. So, it's, I think it's four or eight years out still, but they've approved it for like could be an Olympic sport or like that it will be. That it will be. They oh, they approved really. It. Yeah, I, I looked that up. I'm not looking it up, but I, I, I remember reading yeah. an article about that. Um, it's I not like it's that. not anytime soon. It's it's planned for the future. But I'm not shocked. But still, um, so I'm like, I mean, well, yeah. I, you know, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm like, look, the the biggest thing is like, esports has become a huge deal. Like I, I know guys that um have uh they play for like the Sixers. Like I met a, a team and I'm like, these dudes run around. I'm like, yeah, what do you guys do? I'm like, oh, we're we're esports. We're we're the the local team for the Sixers. I'm like, the Sixers have an esports team. I, oh, saw, yeah. I, I saw something that says it's going to be called like the Olympic yeah. esports game. So it's not going to be like the esports is in the Olympics. It's going to be like Olympic esports, which oh, is that's like terrible. Get in the Olympics. <laughs> but, truly, but truly, though, like the sprinting is insane. If you guys are yeah. really, really bored, if you're really out of your mind, I highly recommend to get yourself in the mood for the Olympics. Go ahead and watch a little. Netflix documentary called Sprint, hmm. and it's all about the 100 and the 200 meter sprinters from you know pretty much Jamaica, the United States, right. and you know a couple other countries, a mm-hmm. smattering of other ones. But the you know the biggest stars in sprinting are obviously Jamaican and and from the U.S. and uh, it's awesome. It's really cool, you know, to see that like same thing like receiver. It's like, but it's right. called like sprint, whatever. Um, it's good, and, and it in United States has a chance to win yeah. gold. I believe it's, in both the hundred and the two hundred. It's always know, funny. You always get to see Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Oh she, yeah, she's still killing it. It's crazy. Yeah. She it's, it's always amazing. funny when certain she's sports so, like come in and take over. Like when you say uh, Bolt was going crazy. Oh when yeah. Phelps, when Michael Phelps was going crazy, everybody came yeah. Like there are certain moments where it's like, oh man, like. So right now with with the running, um, people do care about it, and it is nice. That that do you still have the same? Again, we talked about that with the All Star Game. Do you still have the same pride in America when it comes to the Olympics? Like we're talking about it, so obviously we care enough. But I mean, like when I was younger, the Olympics like meant something. I got to ask my daughter. Like do kids talk about the Olympics. Do they care? Like is does it oh, mean? I don't think they care at all, or they know it all, or give. <laughs> Remember Nagano. They had like yeah. the winter games in Nagano. Like we were yeah, like, oh had to be little kids. Like that was fat. Like that was <laughs> literally the shit. Um, definitely not the same. I no, no way. It, it, no it's, way. it's 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 really funny because I I it's always amazing to me what kids are into. Like my my daughter again, she plays softball, she wrestles, all this kind of stuff. So she's into sports and she watches baseball and all kind of stuff. When I talked to her about Jeremy Kane, like she knew who he was. Mm-hmm. Like before you, we even drafted him, I was like, "Oh, the six months." It's like, "Oh, we might get him." I was like, <laughs> "How do you know who he is?" She's like, oh, "I've been following him on TikTok for you yeah. went to Duke." And I'm like, "Before he went, and I'm, I'm sitting like, how do you know somebody before I knew them?'" And she's like, "Oh, because of TikTok." And I'm like, "That's crazy to me that he had to reach to where teenagers like I know this guy." And she's like, "I like Duke because he went." I'm like, "What?" Like, and I, and I didn't even talk to her about. It. She didn't say anything to me about. It. She's living in this own little bubble world where I brought it up and she got so hyped. She just explained to me all this stuff about. Him. I'm like, "Okay, bro." You know, Olympics right. on TikTok, just Jared McCain and the nail and the nail painting and stuff. Real quick about that though, like the Olympics, I will say I agree with you guys. Like it's not the same as when I was younger, but 
we live in a very like divided nation these days and things like that. I do feel like it is something that does make me feel like have some pride in like a united. We're all together to support these these athletes and um, so I do oh, I still yeah. I still appreciate that aspect. But I agree with you. It's not it's not the same you know electricity or whatever or like kind of fandom as it was when we were younger for sure. I I'll, I'll be honest. Like watching that that the documentary sprint like Pumped definitely you emotional. Okay. You know, if you to see what these guys go through. Oh yeah. You know, because it is like the pressure is just insane. Oh yeah. You only have one you, shot. And yeah. you have like you truly do work for it for a number of years. Yeah. Maybe decade, you know, or more. No, for real, yeah. And you know, it could come down to a false start. Oh know, my god. That's so true. Millis, you know, there's so you know, being a, a fan of the Olympics is something that you like qualify for over time like oh, you've yeah. got to log your time to be a true like <laughs> olympic fan you know and i i don't know i i just remember whoever what was the one gymnast who you know when she did the run and then she the the, the horse thing whatever she goes flying and then she broke her oh yeah uh, yeah yeah man her what was ankle, her name? whatever that that chick like totally that was pain. og yeah that's like she had yeah, the short haircut like, yeah 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 that was one of my first ever moments. Incredible. Like, yeah, that's what you're kind of watching for. You're looking for something crazy yep. to happen. That's now the that's Olympics the is if the sports junkies like us. I mean, I'll put on whatever's <laughs> whatever events on, I'm throwing it on, whether it's one, you know, one more thing shooting. Real quick, though, Black Gritty. Shikari Richardson, yeah. right? So she's from Texas, Dallas. Yes. She's definitely got to be a freaking Cowboys fan. Like I'm almost. <laughs> she might life. not care about about football. Kind of low key might fade her because <laughs> she's a Cowboys bitch ass Cowboys fan. In she, the she, might be a Tex- she might be a Texas fan. Texas on the rise now. You gotta. TJ Stroud. Well, she has to be from Houston though. She's got to be from Dallas. So she's got to be a Cowboys fan. Yeah, I'm willing to bet it. Dallas ain't do shit in her lifetime. She don't. She don't care about yeah. Dallas. Oh, I mean, Jackson, Jackson for the win. For we got we got a couple cockroaches out here that are <laughs> fans, and they never been to Texas, never seen Texas. Don't even know where it is on the map. <laughs> I, mean, I got hope upon hope that she's out there. She got better sense for herself. Yeah, so being a Cowboys fan. <laughs> um, so talk about football. Are you watching this uh, New York Giants on HBO? Yeah, you know what? I actually did throw it on the other night, and I fell asleep. I, uh, I just can't like I just cannot like get into watching something about like the New York Giants like I'm like I've really see, sort of well I do watch hard knocks like I get through it but I do sometimes I'll miss like half an episode or a whole one and just pick up because like that's another one that just doesn't hit as hit as well like no. certain seasons have yes certain well, teams part- have. Raiders season, season, Raiders season with AB and John Gruden. That was a crazy. I don't want to like. I don't want to get soft on the Giants by any means necessary. I like no. where we have the Giants just in complete and utter domination for like a very long period of time. And this is I a like different kind of. Way. This is a different kind of hard knocks though, because it's like GM PR yeah. upper management hard knocks. You're not. Yeah meeting any players or falling in love with like a guy who's like a fifth rounder and has moved his family in and his girlfriend right. got pregnant with three babies. Like there's no like <laughs> a story where they make you feel bad. It's just a bunch of high paid dudes that don't know what they're doing running a franchise. And it's actually hilarious. It's comedy. I watch it. I'm like, there's no going soft. There's no feeling bad for anybody. No, no. Walk around kicking the dirt, talking about, well, I don't want to pay Saquon. Nobody else is going to pay him. He's going to come back. Right. Saquon, yep. please don't leave me. Oh, shoot. Saquon left us. Oh, he went to Philly. I can't sleep. Tonight. Oh like, my their, god! Their embarrassment is just yeah, comical. It's life. cringe. It's like, it's like wow, why, they suck. <laughs> why would you allow this on TV? Yeah. When when the guy sits down, when the general manager sits down with the PR guy, yep. now you know maybe Nick Sirianni isn't the great greatest speaker publicly, but you know that they sit down with the PR guy. He sat down with the PR guy. The PR guy asked him a question. He answered. He's like, don't say that. He's like, I would never say that. He gets up on the <laughs> and says the exact same thing he was joking about because he's got a plan in his brain because he thinks he knows everything. Oh, I'm like, my God. And then he put that on TV? Bro. He, embarrassing. Embarrassing. Like, well, I better run for nine. Th- he, not, he better be the new Giants killer. He better run for 9,000 yards against the Giants this year. And the, that guy fired because it's embarrassing. I watch it for pure comedy. Sake. Yeah. Really interesting about it. I don't feel bad for anybody. It's like, golly gee. You're screwing up all over the place. It I saw is a clip. Yeah. 
Fury. I saw a clip that was talking. It was like uh, the GM, you know, it's like the owner, John Mara, or whatever, sitting in there, looking, you know, looking nervous, right? Talking to the GM, and the GM's like, "Oh yeah, I see. Uh, Chicago might get. I think it was. I think he said like Chicago might give Saquon an offer. Philly's out apparently. <laughs> like he just had no clue what going on. And like he says the Philly's out thing, and John Mara like just hears Philly and is like rubbing his like brow well, like holy shit you can't, you can't go to philly because i won't be able to sleep in yeah he said that right yeah. after that and i was just like mm, the gm clearly doesn't know doesn't know, know what's happening like it does not matter embarrassing yeah. i have some giants fans friends too and i'm just like i send them those clips without <laughs> no caption i just send them the clip just watch it just enjoy your team failing and your owner is more worried about he's the most popular player we've ever had yeah here, yeah like in a long time like they're worried about the popularity of losing that guy one dude that was like the crazy. only guy that had any sense this is just the clips i've seen online and he was like uh what did he say he was like i'm, I'm gonna I feel like i'm gonna have a hard time sleeping when yeah, yeah. He's, he's our most popular player you guys yep. know that, right yep. you guys know he is our most popular yeah. player and not Philly, right? Not Philly. <laughs> like, that could be, you know what? That should be on Saturday Night Live. Like the next oh yeah, Live, that, they should they should crush that as so yeah. like a something you could you could do. <laughs> that could be a skit for sure. Again, I would never allow access like that again to upper management. No, but that's the other thing is isn't that isn't it dependent upon your way where you finish in the season? That's how you get picked for hard. Oh, is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's something with like if you're bad enough, you're in one of the teams that has the ability to be picked. Because I know they've asked other like they've asked teams before and other teams have declined. I know the Eagles have always declined. I know the Patriots declined. Like so, I'm like, how are you even asking these guys to to do hard knocks? Like we're not they're not doing it. But I guess if there's something to where if you're in the bottom tier percent, then you get rolled in the dice. Like hey, we. I guess if that's the case, you can't know nothing about it. But at that point, man alive. You still have final <laughs> say. The Jets had final say. They embarrassed yep. themselves a little bit, but they still tried to clean it up. They just kept bringing in special guests every week. Right. <laughs> they well, they're in still like and now look at them with Hassan Raddick. Holy fuck. Oh, well. He, he, I think he's that. back from Japan now. He's uh, he was in camp <laughs> his, his training camp with the kids out there in 90,000 degree weather. I'd have been like, thanks, Unc, but uh, I'm going to stay inside right now. I don't know if this camp's going to help me get any better besides dropping 20, 30 pounds. Yeah, but, um, real, real quick, I just looked up the, the how they decide hard knocks. It's it's like similar to what you said, but even more kind of interesting. So it says any team can volunteer to be featured, but certain teams can be forced to do it if there are no takers. If a team has made the playoffs within the last two seasons, has hired a new coach, or has appeared on the show within the last 10 years, they're exempt from that year's hard knock. So you're right. If they made the postseason two years in a row, they don't have to do it. If they're one of the bad bad teams and no one else cho- you know, volunteers, they could just say, "Hey, bad team, <laughs> we're gonna follow you guys around all off season." Like that's that's pretty interesting how they decide yeah. that. Okay, that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. So um, like give me uh, uh let, let me let me test your 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 mind on your vacation week, uh, maniac. Who's your uh, top ten quarterbacks? Can you can you think oh, of ten? You think of five? Top five, top ten. Patrick Mahomes is number one. Mm-hmm. Always, we all, we're, we're all three of us are going Patty. Yep. Right. I am for sure. <laughs> number two. Why do I? Why do I like? So. Let me throw him out there. It is a hard choice at two. I feel like after Mahomes, it's hard. It, it is. That, that is. I didn't even want to say an order either. I just know we just know Patrick Mahomes is number one because yeah. the order is the order is a problem. So yeah. let's not go in order. Let's just go after Patrick Mahomes, the other top nine. So we got CJ Stroud. Would you say he's top ten? Absolutely. After one year. Okay, Absolutely. we're going Stroud. Got Joey B. Joey B. I say Joe Burrow is there. Yep. So Joe Burrow. Now, Joe Burrow is living off of legacy because yep. the last two years he's been injured, but he did get to a Super Bowl. He is the Lamar only quarterback. Jackson. He, he, yeah, he is the only quarterback left that uh, has beaten Patrick Mahomes in the postseason. Right. Lamar. So we got Stroud, Joe, Lamar. Um, Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Got to be up there. Yeah, Jalen I don't know what he's. All right, I'm taking Jalen. I've, I've been seeing crazy Jalen rankings lately. Crazy. Oh, yeah, we're, Jalen's out of the top 10 for in a lot of them. Yeah. They have a, they have a, and they did the GM and management whatever lists, and 
he was out of it. Brock Purdy was out of it too. And mm -hmm. so was Jordan Love. So right now I like Jordan Love a lot. I like Jordan Love a lot. I'm 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 probably as high on him as I am on Trevor. I would. I mean he's I think like, Trevor yeah, not... Lawrence and I think think Trevor Lawrence and Herbert. So for no, me, it's like I think I think Lawrence is trash to me. Right, <laughs> like, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put them over here to the side real okay, quick. Okay, okay. And um, what's the other one said? Herbert. Herbert. Now let me tell you something. Okay, let me finish that. So that's Herbie. one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'm taking golf. Yeah. Over them too. Well, he's just yeah. in there. Oh yeah, yeah. over 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 yeah. Lawrence and Herbert. He just went. He went to a Super Bowl. He took the the Lions to the NFC Championship game. Where's Herbert been in the playoffs? He's not gotten out of the first round. Trevor Lawrence has not been out of the first round. He threw five <laughs> interceptions in the second half. Trevor Lawrence has done nothing in the postseason. He's Herbert got worse stats than Minshew. Postseason. I'm just saying, these two dudes are living off a sexy, white, male, blonde-haired <laughs> I mean, you ain't lying. They're both 6'6 or 6'5, too. Sunshine. <laughs> I understand how sexy they look, but fuck these two dudes yep. being in the top ten all the time. Trevor, Lo Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence, hell no. He ain't done a damn thing he just got paid. And Herbert, fuck this dude, man. He's hurt. He was hurt last year. He played like three games. He's out of the top ten right now. Until we get <laughs> no. Well, how many did we have what did Goff put us you? at? Well, how many did, I, did we have before I one, gave you those two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Golf. Stafford. Golf is eight. Stafford, okay, okay. Rams. Okay. Now, you got to no. have one of those. He's got Puka Katuka, and he's right, got yeah. <laughs> If it's so easy to put two people over those two guys, go give me them now. Keep going, I'll, then. I'll yeah, yeah. Wrong. Okay, okay. Stafford, now I'm going to say this because it is what it is. They get to the postseason, but they lose, but at least they get to the postseason consistently every year. They lose in the first round, but they get there. Russell year. Wilson? Dak. Dak. Oh, oh, I yeah, hate that. Definitely. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm not, you know I mean? I'm not putting right. word. But yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Gonna you're right. Real. He's top 10. Okay. So I got Pat, Stroud, Burrow, Lamar, Allen, Jalen, Dak, Golf, and we're wavering on Stafford. Dak is better than Dak. I like Stafford. I like Stafford. Dak is – I mean – to a Super Bowl and to a conference championship. Dak's never been out of the first round in the postseason. Yeah. How, how does this happen, bro? You're he right. Lions, he had Eminem out there in the postseason. They ain't never Barry, Barry Sanders. <laughs> yeah. Barry Sanders ain't never seen no postseason. Yeah. <laughs> ain't no postseason. Golf got as, as I say, Brown, Campbell bite kneecaps and his dumb ass not kicking field goals. Uh, uh, into a uh, Stop disrespecting this little guy. I, and I was gonna say, and Dak and Dak's regular season numbers over his last like, if you do the same number of games, like last twenty five games or whatever, with him and Mahomes, they almost have identical numbers in the regular season. So and it's I like love in his little seven game win streak, and then going into postseason and beating the Cowboys at home over them too, too. So I put love on those guys in the top ten. All right, so all right. you have like two more spots then to get at least no, that's one, ten. Two, that's that's eleven. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten. If you throw J Love, that's got to be eleven, right? And then, and then, no, tra Love is ten. And then I'm gonna put Purdy because fuck him. <laughs> uh, honorable mention. And then we can go uh, uh, tra uh, Trevor Lawrence, Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew. Shut up. He I, got the same stats as Trevor Lawrence. The same exact stats. I know, but he doesn't look as sexy as he. But I, but th I'm saying Trevor Lawrence. That means you're not top ten if you got Gardner Minshew stats. I, I, hell no. Neither way, they're not top ten. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Pat, Stroud, Burrow, Lamar, Allen, Jalen, Love, Dak, Stafford, and Golf. I was, I, I, they have to stop with this slander and putting. Yeah. They put Herbert sixth, the the sixth best quarterback in the league. No. How? The I like Herbert a lot, but he has not done anything. And, and he has anything. no weapons this year. And you no. you think Harbaugh's not going to be in there and say, "Yo, punk, throw the ball." I mean, I run the ball. Thirty-five. None of this more magically flipping your hair back stuff. <laughs> Put the ball in the running back's belly. We're going for it. Stop. Maniac, don't make me maniac out on you. <laughs> we ain't got no long manes, okay? We we out here. We short. Sure <laughs> but Harry's got some. I hair. might take Russell Wilson over Trevor Lawrence. Honestly, I might I, take I'm, Russell Wilson over Trevor. I don't like Trevor Lawrence, bro. He throws too many picks. He's got too. You know, he gets too much credit for the for the Clemson days. I gotta, I gotta say, watch out for what goes on in Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh is very interesting. Okay, yes, Russ, and then the bull, the bull, Justin <laughs> Fields, the yeah. bull. 
<laughs> Justin Fields is going to be – what is he going to – he's going to turn – what is the Ohio State – other Ohio State uh, quarterback that became back, Braxton Miller or something, whatever his name was? R.L. James. I can't, I can't think. No, there's some guy who ended up turning into like a Swiss Army kind of, uh, you know, runner in the league. I forget what, his, what quarterback it was, but that might be what he has to be. Well, it, it's funny because, <clears throat> again, I, I understand that Herbert throws a very sexy ball. I understand yes. – the Trevor Lawrence again. He looks like a. a he can a actually get pop, pop too. Like he can take a shot. Yeah. Talking about yeah. Herbert or he's Lawrence. Yeah. They both. They both. Yeah. Herbert is taking shots for sure. But again, they ain't did nothing. No. And, and you no. get and we give Burrow this legacy off of again one Super Bowl run and yes. loss and beating Patrick. Like he gets elevated in this and he gets injured every year, but he still gets put. Normally, most people's listing second or third. He's second, yeah, he's yeah. Or third. Second or third, and, and so he gets a little off that legacy. It's, but then Jalen Hurts doesn't get any kind of legacy. He doesn't yeah. get anything. Nothing. Nothing. For out, jack for, shit. Nothing. For out dueling Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. I mean, yep. with a loss, but he he had better stats. And I'm like, yep. you, you, where's the, where's the consistency? That's why I said when you when somebody says no. Herbert and Trevor Lawrence to me, this is not a porn shoot. I don't. I, think <laughs> my top I mean, like, I know we're over it. And, and it goes back. I think you you were talking about Nick Sirianni just a minute ago and how. Uh, like, what would he be like somehow in this hard knocks and whatnot? And like, I'd actually be afraid to see it because, like, I don't, I don't truly know what he is like. Like, and I think part of the reason why he's in such a bad situation that he's in right now, which is he's not in a good situation. No. Um, a part of a lot of it has to do with the way that he has been caught, at least, whether it is yep. him personally or not, like his personality has come through like he's put himself in these really really tough this tough light now of like some people think he's a cocky jerk off you know like and mm -hmm. that's just that so he's in that spot hurts you know let's just be, be honest here there were times like when we would listen to him talk after games and you would literally be like you know like what the what did he just say like, <laughs> just quote like <laughs> Where did he like? Is he talking about the game? Like right. he was on some other goofy shit. Like he was acting like a nut. Like, and I don't know. And it wasn't even that bad. I know, but so let, it's let me like just both of them have just done these things that it just make it not. They're not making it easy on themselves. Let Let me hop in there with you real quick. So, <clears throat> Jalen Hurts has played for some of the best coaches in the world in, in college. Like under Saban, like. He knows what great coaching is. So I feel like he comes here <clears throat> and he gets high school Harry, pump up jam, all this stuff. And he's like, yo, coach, calm down. We're in the middle <laughs> of the game. Like, we're in the Super Bowl. Like, relax. Like, he's always got to keep that pressure on him. And when he goes to the podium, he's Tom Brady. I don't know if you ever watched him. I used to watch him because it was hilarious because he never said anything. He right. was just under that bell check thing was on to Minnesota. It was on to Cincinnati. Like, they didn't say anything. So when you have a quarterback in Philadelphia and everybody's like, I want to do this and that. I'm like, no, you don't. I need a CEO guy. When you've got Captain Ra Ra Chiriani, who's out here like a seal clapping his hands all the time, I need a steady guy at the helm that's just saying, look, we lost, we'll fix it. We won, team won. Like, just, just get out of here because Philadelphia will be tear apart everything you say anyway. So with Nick, if they win this year, Kellen Moore gets the credit. Yeah, yeah. The co the defensive coordinator gets the credit. If they lose, Nick's out, and they're gonna hopefully put Kellen Moore in there. So it's a, it is a lose lose situation because again, I didn't like Nick in general because he just fumbles too much, and I'm a people person, and he can't answer. So when they ask you what do you do, and he says, "Well, I I, I, I do, 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 do. you can't even answer your own job." And again, they prep you before <laughs> you go out there. That's embarrassing. Two, <clears throat> when you're sitting there and you don't actually do anything like run offense anymore or anything like that, then you at least need to present like you're running everything and you know what's going on. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he let the team down last year. This is the last thing I'll say. I checked out on him when they lost the 49ers, and it was the first time he didn't speak to the team after the game. He let them have mm. a team meeting. The team fell apart after that. So when they're winning and they're flying high and you're one of the winningest coaches in Eagle history, you go in there every day, pump up the jam. Even when you lost, you pump up the jam. They get their teeth and their back kicked in. You say, oh, players only. Y'all go handle it. You left them in the lurch. Where was the flowers growing between the dirt? Where was inspiration? Where was the hope? You let these guys go in there, and then whatever funk came out of that took us down. So you're not even the rah-rah, bring us together guy. You're supposed to be Captain Culture, Captain Glue. And if you can't do that, bro, you got to be gone. You got to be.
So I'm out. So Man- Maniac, Maniac Malloy, what did you think then at the end of the last season? Did you want did you want Sirianni gone? I'll tell you something. Yeah. I was at that 49ers game. Oh. I'll tell you something else. I was actually in the tunnel club first time in my life. Wow. That game. And <laughs> I so I was there for Dom getting walking off the field, getting wow. thrown out of the game. And then wow. I was there for that team coming off the field. And yeah, it was like it lived it truly was like you were at your grandma's funeral. It was wow. really bad. Those guys walking off of that field. And yeah, I think that you just kind of put it all clicked for me with what you just said. I don't know. I don't I don't wish that on anybody, like to be no. quite honest with you. Of like getting fired, getting fired and getting right. fired. Um, I would like to see him get like at least like make sure because I feel like we moved on from Doug way too early. Yeah. Yes. For my honest opinion, so I, I don't want him to be fired, but also I'm going to be really annoyed, and it's going to get played out if every week it's talking about fire. Yeah, is Nick Sirianni going to get fired this week? <laughs> I'm the Eagles insider. So let, let, let me put it another way, in a positive way, right? So because me and Harry we talk about this all the time, so we're just going to get your point on it. What if the Eagles go out there and they win 13 games? Is it because of Nick Sirianni? Or because of Kellen Moore's new offense. Because here's the thing. If we win, let's say we let's say we go to the Super Bowl, win or lose, let's say we just make it back to the Super Bowl. We can't keep Kellen Moore. Everyone's going to want him. Now, I don't know why he interviews so poorly because he's had opportunities to be a head coach, and he's one of the only ones of these young guys that's not going to job. He's saying something wrong in these interviews. But when you're with the Eagles and you win, people come for you. And so – I'm sitting in a situation where, like, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. Yep. If we do bad, oh, you fire Nick and then you upgrade Kellen or Kelly. And you're like, okay, is that the right thing to do? But if we do great, I'm like, yo, I can't lose you, bro. I need you. Stay with me. That goes exactly. back to how, like, the reason that, like, uh, what's his name? Hurts his boy was, you know, his buddy. Who was the, you know, that's how he ended up being the coordinator, Brian Johnson. Yeah. 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 You hope that they get paired together, it works, and it goes on forever. <laughs> like exactly. the Patriots bullshit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's Johnson like, would have been the younger guy that would you could have kept around. You could have paid yeah. him the money to keep him there. He wouldn't have left you. But th- this situation, it really is a Dan, if you do, Dan, if you don't, very untenable, stressful. I'm yeah, not even really I never happy. thought about that. Kellen will leave immediately when oh, yeah. it's over, no matter what, maybe. For a head coach, maybe maybe, uh, maybe we need to go like somehow go, you know, seven and ten, and then Come you on, fire Nick. it's not gonna happen. It. You're right, it's not gonna I happen. I don't want it. I don't. Here. I don't want it. But I'm just saying, it's one of those things where you're like, yo, know, like how long? I'm, you know, what's the, what? When is is Jalen Hurts like actually benched? Oh, yeah. what you think? You think we're closer to that than we are to like firing Nick? What do you think's closer? I think it's firing Nick before benching Jalen. Jalen Hurts is not getting benched. Yeah, come on. The only way Jalen Hurts doesn't play is if he gets injured. Jalen Hurts is right. not getting benched. He's not getting benched. I, but I'm scared if we win a lot of games, we keep Nick and lose Kellen, and then it's like we didn't if we unless we win the Super Bowl, it's like we sold our soul for nothing if that ends up happening. You know what I mean? That's why I'm almost like <laughs> it will never happen and I don't want it to happen. But maybe in theory, going like seven and ten would get Nick out and then we get a head coach and then we win next we, year. Like, we, I, I'll put it to you this way. I don't know. If we if we go on a Super Bowl run. And that, see, that's so God, that sounds so crazy. Yeah. You're just about Doug Peterson. You're absolutely right. Exactly what I'm saying. Like, it's like we're just in such run, a... I'd literally say, Nick, you're out. Kellen, you're upgraded the head coach. You because have to. Otherwise, not... you're stuck with Nick for the rest of your uh, 10 years. You know what I mean? Like, we're stuck with that him. That could be a way of why they hired Kellen Moore. To just yeah. be ready to get rid of Nick? You know? Yeah, yeah you're right. So, it, it's... Doug and Nick in fire like that is crazy, though. It is yeah, crazy. It, it, it feels crazy to think about. So, let me wrap up a couple other things. Uh, you 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 on the Sixers this year, Maniac? You you, you hyped up? You gonna be down there? We'll be whooping. You gonna be? I love the Sixers. Very big sponsor of Bed Parks. Love the Sixers. I mean, I I mean, I love the move. I I. Uh, it'll be it'll be great. You know, you just got to pray for for good health and a yeah. good run, and for Tyrese Maxey to just keep keep on doing it, and <laughs> you know, maybe with the, those three guys, maybe. They're healthy if they're rolling. Then so 
I'm, you know, it's, it, I'm, I'm pregnant with hope right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you and Harry both. Me too, been, bro. Me too. Nine years overdue. Like I'm, I'm about yeah. to go in there and pull a C-section out here. <laughs> yeah. y'all, y'all been hope mothers for a long time. I, and I, and I, again, I, I do love the Sixers. I've just been realistically right now. But I will tell you this, I mean, because I know you get hyped out here in these streets. You be out here whooping, whooping, and yelling and stuff like that. I will tell you one thing: you can go and and, and lie and say that it's yours. You can take this because uh, there's only like 23 people watching the show uh, on the podcast. Nobody, nobody's listening. Nobody knows that you stole it from me. But I'm gonna give you this: the Sixers key to winning a championship. The Sixers key to even get me to an Eastern Conference final, like getting to the finals, is right here, baby. Allen Iverson black jerseys. Ah, you're you put right. a black 76 are out there on the court, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, if there's ever a game seven, Maniac, you know how you, you guarantee the Sixers win? I'm going to tell you. Yeah. What formula? Hip-hop yeah. comes out and rings uh, the bell. Him and Franklin go out and do double simultaneous dunks on both sides of the court. City's on fire, brother. We win. And let's go. go. I'm into Champions. that. I want, I want black jerseys. I want black Air Force Ones. I want, <laughs> I want Franklin, my dog. And if you get me that, we will be thugged out, murderous in the city. It'll be a blackout in Philadelphia. Those out hours in Jersey. I Damn. swear, to you, that's the only thing that I I get excited every time I say it. I'm it's getting hyped up. You <laughs> bring me joy. If you tell me the Black Knights are coming out and that court's gonna be old school 76ers, I swear to Jimmy Chris, you think that uh uh, uh well, what's the name? Rocky means something to somebody. Now nah, bring my dude out on that motorcycle. Have hip hop with the do raggers. Yeah. Bring that Mary Jimmy Bell and flex that muscle out. I'm just sitting in the front. Yep. God damn. Thank you, thank you. Guaranteed, guaranteed win. I don't care what. First round, second round. Repeat. <laughs> and we're in the game seven. And the Sixers are bringing that Mary Jimmy thing home. That's what you can Ooh. go out here in the streets, Maniac. That's what you can tell. You can save it from you. Take it. I'm it. fired up. I'm fired up. Let's go. That's what, <laughs> That's what we need. That's oh, what man. We need. I think. If you do that, you need to also bring back that disgusting teal colored blue one as well. What it's, is that? What are you even like talking about? Blue one. I tell what? You what? I teal. Tell you what, I, I, yeah, I know exactly what he's saying. I about. gotta look this one up. What the I'm hell? Not even mad at I will tell you, um, <laughs> uh, Sarah, wherever you are, this girl stole that jersey. I had an Allen Iris jersey in that teal. She stole my jersey. I should, I should, I should find her on Facebook. Be like, yo, you still got my jersey? I'm, she's wearing like a dang on Moo. I'm a dinosaur. She's a tiny chick. She took my jersey. I don't know what's going on. Maybe she had another. Get that shit. You gotta get that shit back. But yeah, like oh, you said, mean like the blue ones? I can't even say the blue ones though. Yeah, I, I'm I'm into that for sure. Yeah. So the, the, I I just I love I know some I, I just love that 76 er swoop with the trail on it. I love the court. You gotta I, have I the shoulders the sticking out though a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you my, love it. It doesn't no, love you. That's. Yeah. <laughs> They wow. said it's coming back next year, not this All year. All I got to say saying. is one word. What? Go Phillies. Go ah, Phillies. you're right. We got them now. One word. You hear me? Yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> Go Phillies. Go Phillies. Um, so, uh, Maniac, thanks for being on. Uh, we're, we're checking out Bet Parks for everything. Bet Parks Casino. Uh, I, I usually roll out there sometimes to go see the guys at Go Birds. They got lovely chairs out there. Super chill. Get some free AC. Go spend some money and uh, watch everything on the big screen. Yeah, let oh, me know. Big screen. Thanks. Next time you're up there, let me know. I will. I will. Yeah, like I said, I, I got a couple of ladies out there in Levittown, so I'll be rolling out that way. I mean, like I guess I'll be in these streets for different reasons than you, maniac. Different reasons, but I'm out here in these streets. Yeah. <laughs> Get that Curly's cheesesteak in you out in Levittown. Hey, hey look, Ooh, yo, okay. Trevor Lawrence and Herbert ain't the only cute ones out here, all right? <laughs> getting curled up. In America, right? Yeah, getting curled up, yeah. <laughs> uh, follow, like, share, subscribe on the YouTube and uh, Spotify and all those things, iTunes. We are out. We appreciate you hanging out with us on a random week in the summer. Appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.